king of the blade, as I'm sure you know, in England, they're trying to make you have a license now for a butcher knife, like in China. And so I guess for people to defend themselves, some people have been using swords and knives in their own homes. And when they get attacked and defend themselves, the police go persecute them. Is that because the state wants a monopoly of force and doesn't want citizens defending themselves? It, it must be something like that. Uh, I mean, the police are very conscious of, of people taking the law into their whole, own hands, and, and we understand that, that you, we can't do that. We don't want to lynch mobs and things like but that. But defending yourself? Well, yes, but defending yourself, um, you're allowed to use reasonable force. However, if you happen to have a particularly lib uh, liberal judge who's be a liberal appointee or something like that, he may well, he very well decide that, uh, you know, you, you, when you when you took that big heavy walking stick and clubbed this lout to death with one hefty blow, uh, that you were in fact infringing his light rights. Uh, the fact that he had no right to be in your bedroom at two o'clock in the morning when you and your child were, uh, and, 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 and wife were sleeping in the house has got nothing to do with it. You know, you, you, you shouldn't really have done that. You should have used a more reasonable force. No, yes, when you're getting attacked in the middle of the night, you're supposed to control oh. yourself. Amazing, and that's what Reclaiming the Blade's all about. We'll talk about the film in our final segment with our guest, John John Reese Davies, straight ahead. We really appreciate him giving us this time in the evening. Don't worry. This show is documented. Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. I fell into a burning ring of fire. I went down, 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 and the flames went higher. And it burns, burns, burns. You know, I forgot to tell you that uh, Vigo Mortensen is also in Reclaiming the Blade. And this is a two-disc special, so before our guests leave you, I'm going to have the director tell you where you can get a copy of it. Well, ReclaimingTheBlade.com is one place that's going to hit TV and stores uh, very, very soon if it hasn't already hit. I was lucky. I got this like two months ago and saw it before anybody else had, and so I'm not up to date on where it is and where it's airing, but I know it's going to be on TV or is already been on a bunch of TV stations. So, so we'll, we'll find out all those details with the director, Daniel McNichol, here in just a moment. But I'm telling you, I am blown away by talking to, uh, you know, the man who played all these great roles uh, that I was uh, just, you know, such a fan of uh, as a kid. But even modern day, I love Lord of the Rings. I'm always, I'm always talking about Washington, D.C. and, you know, the, the, these major capitals is Mordor and the all-seeing eye of Sauron. Looking down on us, and uh, John Reese Davies is, of course, uh, Gimli. Will I have to run all the way to Isengard? <laughs> I'm probably torturing him doing his lines. That's a, that's a very good representation of that, yes, right. But you see, Lord of the Rings is very much about that. It's very much about a challenge coming to your civilization that will either destroy your civilization or you must rise and stand up and fight for it. And if you don't, you'll lose your civilization. And if you do, you might just save it. Now we've got Gimli on the air with us. Gimli, what was it like working with uh, Aragorn of Arathorn? Uh, Aragorn, oh, he's, he's, he's the best. I mean, as men go, he's just about the best. They were all a grand bunch assisting me in the recovery of that ring. I must say, they all did them. They all did very well. But it is essentially a dwarf story, you know, about uh, the recovery of the ring, well, with the help of hobbits and uh, others, yes. Well, the ring did come from below the ground, and that's the... That's the realm of dwarves. That's right. That's right. It was our goal originally, I fear. But you've got to be careful of the concentration of power, you see. Power does corrupt. And, and, and absolute power does corrupt absolutely. One ring to rule them all and in the darkness bind them? One ring to rule them all and in the darkness bind them <laughs> in the land of Mordor. Where the shadows lie. Oh my God! Uh, you know what? There, uh, I really want to get you back on sometime because this has been an amazing interview. You're even got more energy in person, and, it, and it's just a, a lot of fun because I'm a big fan of those movies as well. And then to find out you're a lover of liberty and a patriot. Before we go to the director, uh, and, and you've been gracious to stay with us while the director's on with us. We were kind of ranting during the breaks, talking, and, and, and you were bringing up some of the other tyrannies that Europe and England 
are uh, coming under that were outraging you and that have the rest of the citizenry outraged. What are what are some of the other beefs that you have uh, with uh, what's happening right now in Europe and England? Well, in Britain in particular, uh, our, our Chancellor, who is a man, of, our ex-Chancellor, who is now our Prime Minister, who is a man of extraordinary self-delusion. I mean, he really did believe that his activity saved the world uh, during the banking crisis. Um, he was confidently saying that, you know, he will not cut public services, uh, you know, at a time when, for instance, 100,000 uh, private sector jobs were lost, he managed to add 30,000 public sector employees. In the end, you cannot spend your way out of debt. In the end, everyone in the private sector supports all the people in the public sector. In the end, government works for us, not for us working for the government. These are just inalienable truths, but somehow they seem to be forgotten so easily by every damn common political jack. Sorry. No, no, you're right, but it's, it's a vertically integrated economy. And it's the same in, here in the United States. Everything's collapsing. We're losing 640 plus thousand jobs a month. And they're expanding the size of government. And they're increasing all the taxes. And the shops are starting to all close. And the government says, we're going to hold you by your legs and like the sheriff of Nottingham and shake the shillings out of your pockets. I mean, it's almost like they want us to have a revolution. It's like they want to force us into confrontation. Well, I don't think it's that. It's, it's, there is a belief that if you give, if you give, if you hold circuses and give bread and just give and give and give, then you will create an, uh, 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 an electric that's, uh, uh, that's wholly obligated to you. Um, unfortunately, in the end, the buck has to stop somewhere. And the only way out of it is that government will have to start printing paper. You know, and, and I have lived in, in, in societies where Inflation has gone to 3%, 4%, 5% a day. Imagine having 10 savings, save up your life savings is $10,000. It's, it's, it's a good little hunk. With 10, that $10,000, you can actually do something. And in the space of one year, that $10,000 isn't worth enough to buy your family a meal. You imagine how mad you'd be. And that was Yugoslavia, uh, just... 15, 18 years ago, 20 years ago. Uh, well, look at Zimbabwe. Look at other... I mean, look... In fact, all this money they've spent is guaranteed to start coming back in. We're already seeing inflation in many areas go up, even though housing's going down. It's kind of a nightmare stag inflation that's starting to set in. Yes, indeed. And, and uh, the damnable thing is, you see... In a way, spending your way out of inflation, uh, out of depression, is is a theoretically interesting way of doing it. Um, but you have to really have you have to really have to have growth in place, or the, the seeds of growth in place that will will, will match the investment um, that, that you're putting into things. You just instead, it all goes for bonuses to offshore banks, and the carbon tax is a wet blanket on that economy. The yeah, carbon tax is just a load of twaddle. It's just it's just an extra way of taxing people. That's all. And I'm sorry for interrupting you when you were getting into no, no, no. It, matching, you know, matching actual development. I guess like monorail trains, better roads. Instead, more and more just goes for debt, servicing the debt, like we are Zimbabwe as everything collapses. I don't know about England. I was just over there a few years ago, but we have bridges collapsing every week. The roads are rotting. Uh, I mean, you go to stores now, and then the carpet's peeling up. Well, we're now paying, I think, more for our, to service our debt than we spend on defense. And I've got an idea it must be rapidly approaching what we spend on, in, on, on, on education. Amazing. Well, uh, John... It, it, it's terrifying. John Reese davies is our guest. He doesn't need any introduction. You know, Sala from, of course, uh, the Raiders of the Lost Ark and other uh, Indiana Jones films with Harrison Ford, of course, a huge star uh, in the Lord of the Rings trilogy and so many other huge films. Before we get in the re remaining minutes with the director uh, into Reclaiming the Blade, you're just a very interesting man, obviously, but, I mean, seriously, you really are. What are some of your other interests? What else is on your mind? Uh, what else are you working on right now? Um, well, 
um, I, I, I just did a little radio uh, thing today, um, which is why I was a little bit late coming back. Um, but, but my private passions, well, I have a three-year-old daughter who is the love of my life. I'm extraordinarily happy uh, at, at this, this moment in time in, in my life. The last four, four and a half years uh, have been extremely happy. I, I, I play with cars. I have a disgraceful collection of wonderful cars that I really should send down, but it's rather like sort of working, you know, it's a, it's a, it, and I don't want to use the word mockingly, but it's a sort of Sophie's choice that you have to make when you try to get rid of one. I mean, you can't possibly let that one go because, well, you know, all that one, all that, so you end up keep, keep, keeping them all, really. Um, but it, it, I like engineering. Um, I, I like I like getting up in the morning and, and getting my hands dirty. 